I think this is what we're talking. Adrenaline rush. Man, but they didn't get that. They still gotta learn. Whoa. Right guys, so got a little bit of a um, white flag being raised at the moment. It's the cheetah all recomposing. They've moved a little bit away from the um, the warthog burrow and they are just yeah, they're just recollecting, um, resting a bit, licking their wounds. So, while they do that, I'm just going to come here and sit close to them, close-ish. Not to disturb them too much, but we're going to get into some really interesting facts. And I think one of the facts that we should touch on first is the fact that these are the fastest land mammals. They're really are incredibly fast. Um, and having just witnessed that firsthand, it is unbelievable to see how quick they can accelerate from 0 to 100. 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.5 seconds. Guys, that is quicker than most supercars. So the fact that an animal can run we accelerate to that speed in that amount of time is super impressive. Yeah, there's the bleating, bleating, bleating. Yeah, bleat. And the, ch the chirp. Sounds exactly like a bird, doesn't it? So look at the cheetah. You look at its body. And immediately you can see that these animals are designed for speed, not strength. They're not the strongest of the big cats. Their body is gracile in structure. It's not robust like a lion. A lion is very thick set, very muscular and uh, you can see very powerful. The cheetah is very sleek, very streamlined, very elegant. Small head, almost an aerodynamically shaped head if you ask me. Very small head, not big jaws, not big canines, not even big carnations. There's nothing super impressive about the cheetah's dentition or its uh, actual body strength. What's super impressive about the cheetah is its speed. The features that have evolved to go with that speed are, are numerous. One distinct feature is uh, cheetah don't have retractable claws on all the toe pads. The dew claw is retractable. That's the, the thumb claw that's retractable, but the toe pad claws are not, and they serve as running spikes, if you will. So if you think about it, they're quite long. They're dog-like. We'll get to dogs in a second. They're dog-like in the sense that when they run, they can penetrate the earth and give good traction. The poor pad is also designed um, or has also evolved to be like a running shoe. It's got almost like thick uh, tread-like features on it that obviously aids in grip. 
but a very clever feature is the tail, which is long and flat, like a rudder, and it helps steer the cheetah at speed. So if you look at the cheetah there, you can see what I'm talking about. It's not a thin tail like a leopard, it's long and flat, like a rudder on a boat. And so it uses that tail as a counterbalance. Cheetah goes left, tail goes right, and it uses the, the tail to turn. So the cheetah tail is not only an amazing device in being able to steer the cheetah, but what science has also shown now is that uh, a cheetah can decelerate from 16 meters a second down to four meters a second in three strides. So it's literally, wow. Um, decelerates from that and in so doing it can, uh, it can stop a turn that would normally be about 19 meters in radius down to just 1.4. So that's incredible. So when an animal tries to outsmart it by changing direction, a cheetah can instantly react by in three, st three strides decelerate down to uh, four meters a second, which is incredible, from 19, 19.7 meters a second, and then make that sharp turn. That's, that's a super, super incredible fact that I didn't know, and now you do. One of the most striking things is uh, the malar stripes, or those facial stripes on the, on the eye, below the eye, from going from the eye down, just uh, beside the nose, down to the mouth. And it is believed that those black stripes absorb sun. They hunt in the day, so it absorbs the sun and therefore doesn't reflect into the eye and disturb their vision. So it helps with the vision. Some would argue that that's not um, really why they're there. It makes sense because if you look at a lion, a lion has white under the eye, which reflects light into the eye. That helps, obviously, if you're a nocturnal predator. Cheetah hunts in the day. So... You know, black would definitely aid in, in uh, absorption of the light. So are they related to dogs? I've heard that come up quite a bit in the past because of the non-retractable uh, claws. Um, people have said, oh, well, they may be somewhere along the line were related to dogs. Not so. The closest or the, the lineage that they stem from is the puma and um, some of their the ancestors date back to four million years. There's fossil evidence showing cheetahs um, carbon dated between 1.6 and even two million years. Uh, so they've been around for a long time. All right, so there's three phases of these guys' lives. Cycle. <laughs> And the first one is cub, and cub basically spans all the way from birth up until 18 months. That would put the Miracle 8 as cubs, by definition, um, although I call them sub-adults. Anyway, and then 18 to 24 months is adolescence, and then from 24 months onwards is adult. Now, cheetahs don't live very long in the wild. Uh, they live a very fast-paced life. Um, we've seen uh, from our own cubs, the Miracle 8, that they are extremely vulnerable. Uh, vulnerable to man and vulnerable... Ooh, okay guys. Vulnerable to man and they run away. And vulnerable to other predators. So, like in the case of the, the three that make up the Miracle 8, their mother was killed by a lion. And so, they don't live that long. Typically between seven and eight years of age in the wild. In captivity, they can live up to 14. That's probably a good innings. I have heard of some cheetah living even slightly longer than that. So, if you can imagine, guys, it's not a lot of time to... Um, you know, spread the genes. It's not a lot of time at all. From the time that they can start breeding, which is about 24 months, they don't have a lot, a lot of time to raise many litters. So that adds to the vulnerability. Um, the, the Miracle 8 
are now at a phase where we are starting to plan their release and so these guys are here now in the rewilding camp and uh, it's going very well although they missed out on their warthog this morning it's not a problem they will make a kill they have been killing successfully for about two months now they've been killing um, and eating successfully uh, bless buck um, impala and of course warthog as well um, and that's put them in a good position their fitness is up because that is one of the major concerns with cheetah that are going to be rewilded is you know how do you get them fit and so for me it's never been a case of having to exercise them because i think the more that they chase prey the fitter they're going to get guys an interesting fact this is a, a horrible fact but it's an interesting one that 90 since the 1900s 90 percent uh, of cheetah have pretty much uh, disappeared uh, from the the natural habitat and that's that's like just bad news. Uh, the global population of cheetah is estimated to be at around 8,000 individuals. And uh, the Asian uh, cheetah population is uh, guessed, well, I don't think it's a guess because there's so few, there's about 50 individuals. Um, and uh, in one isolated pocket uh, in Iran. So it doesn't spell good news for cheetah. And it is another reason why uh, we need to be uh, protecting these guys and um, it's another reason why we need to be thinking about the bigger picture all right guys so i hope you enjoyed those interesting facts about cheetah uh, i find cheetah um, very interesting animals they're not your typical big cat if you did enjoy the video please do like and share and uh, remember to hit the notifications bell so you don't miss out on another cool wildlife video and to take it that extra step further, guys, uh, go and check out channel memberships, YouTube channel memberships. Titles you to exclusive video content, as well as other cool stuff like uh, emoji, special little emotes next to your name as well, as um, cool photographs from the sanctuary. And of course, the memberships does go a long way in helping us do our wonderful work with the animals and supporting the foundation, uh, my foundation, which obviously in turn supports uh, the wild. So not only will you be supporting um, the animals in the sanctuary, but you'll also be um, helping support uh, animals in the wild, which is ultimately what it's all about. So all that's left to say is uh, thanks so much for watching. Pity we didn't get that kill, but hey, who knows, maybe next time. Until next time from me, Kevin, and uh, the Miracle 8. Well, there's only four there. Five. One, two, three, four, five. They blend in so well. Bye.